good day, YouTube, and welcome to another episode of the Alpine Rhino Beer Review. Today with the Rhino, and we're looking at a beer that is currently contract brewed, but does have a, uh, well, as of the date of this video, it was contract brewed, but it should have a, it should have a, a production brewery opening up any day now. It's in Blythe, Ontario. It is Cowbell Brewing Company's Absent Landlord, which is apparently a country Kolsch. It is 5.3% alcohol by volume. Um, what do we have here? Uh, 5.3, IBU of 19, no, 18, sorry. SRM of 5.5, temperature 3 degrees. Yeah, this is a lot warmer than 3 degrees. It just came in my, uh, it just came in my LCBO order. What do we have here? Um, Cowbell Absent Landlord. This was a $2.90 uh, can. Now back here it says, founded in 1851 as Drummond, the town was renamed after a wealthy landowner in Berkshire, England, bought the entire town, sight unseen in 1855. Henry Blythe, Esquire, never made the ocean voyage to visit his namesake. Well, there you go. Now we understand why it's called Absent Landlord. Okay, so first and foremost... That don't look like any Kolsch I have ever drank in my life. Uh, orangish, bright white head, but very orangey hued. Um, very, very, very unfiltered. Cannot see my hand through it. I've had wheat beaters that have more uh, more ability to see through than this guy. Scent. A little soapy out of the glass, to be honest. Yeah, soapy and almost like pear-like out of the glass. Out of the can? Okay, out of the can, that's more... That's more what I expected out of the can. A little grassy. Grassy, earthy. But that's about it. Just grassy and earthy out of the can. And kind of soapy and pear-like out, out of the glass. Um, let's try it. Cheers. I wonder where this was contract brewed, and I wonder if uh, it was a contract brew where they brewed it or they paid the brewery to brew it for them. Uh, because you can do both ways. I mean, um, Triple Bogey, for instance, um, uh, and a lot of other contract brewers that are just trying to get into the beer market without uh, really caring. I'm not saying that's what these guys are doing. I'm just saying that there are a lot of them out there that will actually pay a brewery to brew their beer and they really don't have a staff that does it. They don't have a brewmaster or anything else. It's just they pay somebody to do it for them and somebody does it for them. Um, whereas there's other contract brewers where they go in and they, they brew on the system and then uh, then they have to wait till it's all fermented and then they come in and package it and take it out. But I'm curious where they brew this because... Um, and how it, how it goes because here's what I'm getting I'm getting some nice cool flavors I'm getting a nice uh, mellow graininess I'm getting a nice earthy dirty yet floral uh, hop back end I'm getting a slight sweetness but what I'm picking up, which is what's bothering me, is just the tiniest touch of, uh, of butter. Yeah, right at the very beginning. It only lasts for, like, a second, too. It's not like it's, it's, not like it's one of the Blue Elephant Brew Pub beers or um, the original Grand River beers or anything like that. It hits your palate. And it's gone. 
and then you're just left with the Kolsch flavors, but it's, it's just one of those things where I'm just curious. I'm just curious. Um, it's not a bad beer. I mean, for the first beer from Cowbell, it's a beer that I can see probably doing really well. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, you got to remember that a lot of these breweries are now opening in places that, well, places that don't have huge craft brewery uh, footholds or huge craft beer uh, fans because of the fact of where they are in, in the province. I mean, you don't think Ontario is all that big, but it's, it's, it's big and it has a vast array of everything from uh, metropolises to rural farm towns. And when you when you think about that, and that it, it really does vastly change from place to place, you understand that even the even the beer market changes from place to place within the same province. So I think this is a safe beer to start with. I think it's a beer that can help them uh, in that it's fairly approachable. It is a little hoppier than uh, than some people will like, but at the same time, you get this cold instead of basement temperature. And I'm sure people will really fall in love with it out there. Um, the Kolsch's are a style of beer that you can really make something good with. You can do something good with. The only problem is it's lagered, so it takes longer to, to work with. Uh, and it's more work to ferment it out. Uh, if this was just, say, a, uh, a, say, I don't know, a Keller beer. If it was just a Keller beer, or it was just a golden ale, or whatever you wanted, uh, and it was it was just an ale that took a week to do instead of a couple weeks, uh, you, you'd probably be better off that way. That being said, like you, you could just make it into a blonde. Make it into an unfiltered blonde, and uh, ale it. And uh, it, would, it would come quicker, and you'd be able to move it faster. But all in all, it's not a bad beer. Out of 10, I'd give it a 7. Thank you guys. Bye.